Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. You can hear me and see me. Uh, welcome to the next installment of the Harnessing Happiness Black Male Leadership Roundtable. I have three very esteemed um, Black men that I hold in high regard. Um, truly am thankful for them to offer their lived experiences and their um, their opinions and their critique of, of this thing we call happiness. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Dr. Eric Charlton. I am the creator of the Harnessing Happiness um, series and really am particularly interested in Black men and how we define our happiness. Um, I know we have several different um, lived experiences and I like to capture and garner those, those lived experiences um, it, it adds, um, you know, uh, something additive to my life, and I know it'll it'll add to others as well. So, with that being said, I want to um, go around the the panel and have each one of you gentlemen introduce yourself. Um, take about forty five seconds to a minute, and then we'll get right into it. So I'll start with um, Victor, Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. Well, hello everyone. <laughs> my name is Victor Jones. Um, I currently am the uh, community business liaison, uh, career transition liaison for the Dayton Job Course Center. Um, I, I've worked in education for over a decade, a decade, and uh, I, I feel myself, I, I, I believe I'm a servant leader. I love giving back. Um, I love giving back uh, to students. Good morning, Dayton Job Corps Center. I love it. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. I love, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> but I love giving uh, back uh, for students, and and I love affecting lives. You know, as, as far as building that career and personal development of students and of uh, just individuals as well. Um, I, I'm a family man. Uh, family. Uh, brings me a tremendous joy, uh, and also I am a Christian. Of course, I, I believe in God, and God has has brought me uh, just just numerous things in my life, and and through knowing Him, has helped me be able to really uh, help others. And so, um, hopefully, uh, during this discussion, I'll be able to share some insight and 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 share some value for you all. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Victor. Um, Harris, now you can introduce yourself. Great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I always like to start with my name, Harris Kojo Glover Tay. It's a mouthful. So, uh, Harris, common last name. My mother's from Panama, Central America. Uh, Kojo, they name us at the day that we're born. My father's from Ghana, West Africa, and we are from the Tay clan. I always like to start just because it kind of shows the tapestry that makes up uh, the man that I am. Uh, I am a head coach of Align Performance. Uh, that's where I do executive coaching, diversity and inclusion training. I've been doing I've been doing DNI work now uh, for over ten years. Uh, I started with my background in community organizing in Dayton, Ohio, uh, where I learned. Um, you know, came out of college just ready to to change the world, uh, thinking I'm going to do it. Oh no. Oh no, that's the work of the people. And uh, again, just like my brother, uh, brother Victor Jones said, uh, you have to um, you have to be a servant leader. It's not about you. And as soon as you realize that it's not about you, true change, not just true change, but sustainable change can occur. Um, also, as you see in the background, uh, new uh, co-CEO of Hipster Hops Rabbitry. We are a black rabbit um, uh, breeding company. Uh, we sell fertilizer, we do birthday parties, so uh, the family, we decided to bet on ourselves uh, to do the family business, so uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful time, it's full of joy, it's full of family, and it's full of community, so glad to be here for this discussion. Awesome, awesome, Harris. I, I love the, the, the term tapestry, mm -hmm. you know, definitely our, our lives are so um, colorful and, and uh, varying, so I, I love that, and thank you for um, offering your suggestion today. And last but not least, Mr. Walton, John Walton. 
you would have me go after a guy who just said that he was a rabbit rancher. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what I can say. <laughs> my name is, is Sean Walton Sr. Um, as my Facebook profile says, I am a public speaker, trainer, and servant leader like the other uh, men on the uh, panel. I um, um, am a father, a biological father of two, uh, however, two adult children, 36 and 31, soon to be 32. And I, um, I spent a great number of years uh, working with the community. Uh, I spent some time building the Community Action Partnership Youth Empowerment Center, uh, winner of a couple of best practice awards, and uh, then um, moved on to work for the city of Dayton as a community police council, director of community police council, and community initiative to reduce gun violence. And um, also uh, spent five years as youth minister for Grace United Methodist Church. And I've done a few other things uh, throughout the life. All that's just to say that you might be able to listen to just a little bit of what I have to say, um, but that's it. I'm, I'm a consultant. I, I'm a consultant and just glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome, awesome. Once again, gentlemen, I truly thank you all um, <clears throat> for participating today. So I'll get right, right into it. Um, I try not to, to ask each one of you the same question, um, but first um, for for Sean, uh, Sean, what what defines your your happiness? Hmm. Peace, peace, like literally, you know, um, that is my prosperity. I've written on it a few different times, you know, uh, kind of a short rants and and uh, you know just you know a few pieces on it, just the prosperity of peace. And as long as, you know, I control some parameters on my peace, I'm happy. You know, it really doesn't take a lot for me. You know, if my environment is peaceful, um, if my family is healthy, and if my family is unhealthy, if I'm at peace with that, that's what defines my happiness. Wow. wow. Thank you. So what, what do you, what can you say to, to a, a young man who, doesn't have that that environment um, to you know his perception of peace is not there. Um, what what advice could you give to him? Find, find spaces like find peace within your own head. Uh, I tell people all the time I am at the best time inside my head. I can travel anywhere in my head. Um, read if if you're not really hooked on reading or you you know have some reading deficits. They've got something called audio books now, you know? And so find some good audio books, explore a little, uh, go places you've never been before, where, you know, where your feet can't travel, your mind can travel. So I say find uh, things that you enjoy, right? All by yourself, learn to enjoy your own company. I don't care if it's a closet, clear that space out at the bottom of that closet where you can get in and make it be your own space. Right. So try to find some physical spaces that you literally set up um, that make you feel good just being in it. You know, my house is that right now it's a storage unit, but this is the peace zone uh, for a young person. It may be a corner of their room if they share a room with someone else. But one place that we own all the real estate right now is our own head. So my thing is going to your own head, that creative space and find you a place of peace all by yourself inside your own head. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Inside your own head. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, Victor, yes. what, what has been or what are some of the elements in your life that helps to support your, your personal happiness? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, of course, uh, you know, and I know uh, you're going to hear this a lot. <laughs> my relationship with God, um, uh, my relationship with God, uh, me building that foundation has helped me be a better family man. Uh, and that comes next. Uh, my relationship with God and family. Family is, uh, gives me tremendous support and happiness. Um, uh, my beautiful wife and two beautiful daughters, um, they give me that strength uh, to keep on going and, and that supportive strength. Um, of course, have being around being around uh, the correct individuals, those positive influences, uh, those colleagues, uh, friends, acquaintances, just make sure they're positive. They're positive and uh, good for your emotional health and mental health. Uh, so and coworkers as well. 
Um, all those aspects play a tremendous role in how you treat others. Uh, so uh, having that support system, uh, that nucleus support system of, of, of Christ and my family uh, is, is able uh, to provide me uh, knowledge and experience in, re in regards to treating others. It helps me know how to treat others as well. Uh, um, I, I do believe it's crucial. You know, it's a crucial component of how we feel about ourselves is going to affect how we treat others. And so uh, I, I focus on, on those areas, uh, but I also, as um, the gentleman stated before, self-help books, you know, reading those things that, that uh, bring self-help and knowledge to make you a better person. I'm always striving to be a better person so I'm able uh, to help others and love others uh, more effectively. And so those aspects uh, bring me joy and happiness. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Harris, because of your, your diverse background, um, and before I, I get to that, um, <clears throat> there was a, um, a, a quote by um, Michelangelo that talks about when he um, yeah, sculpted David, he said he always saw David he just have, had to remove away the unnecessary things. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. So I, I ask you, um, what what were some of the things while, while you were growing up, what were some of the things as you matriculated through life that you had to to carve out to, to maintain your, your happiness? Wow, that's a wonderful question. Uh, off, the, off the back, I would say uh, being able to let go of this this notion of this kind of fictitious solid ground. <laughs> um, my father uh, was a pastor, uh, mother a deacon, United Methodist Church. So growing up as a PK, um, it, it seemed like everything was just laid out, you know, and um, expectations were set before I was even born, right? So there was always the way that I was supposed to do things. And yeah, you know, as long as you do those things, then, you know, if you, you act right, you speak well, you go to the right school, you, uh, you know, use the proper etiquette, all of that, um, then, then quote unquote, everything is promised to you. And it's funny, you know, we talk about the wisdom of our parents, my mother, <laughs> I can laugh at it now, it used to make me mad when I was a teenager, she used to go, you're living a double life, you know, you're living a double life, <laughs> what are you talking about? I was living maybe six lives, and she saw right through it and the beauty of growing and, and and you know maturing and becoming a man I can now look back and I can see that uh just like you can't serve more than one master you can't live <laughs> you know you can't live those multiple lives because all it's gonna do is just tear you apart it's just gonna tear you apart so um there's this book by John uh Ortberg and it's called um if you want to walk on water you got to get out of the boat. Whew. I heard that maybe about six months ago and it just didn't, you ever had something just hold on to your spirit and not let go? You know, just, just, just like the angel, you're just not going to let go. So it's been a challenge for me to, uh, to get out of that boat means to let go of what I thought was solid ground what I perceived as solid ground, because the, the true solid ground is, is a spiritual faith-based thing. So, for example, uh, five years ago, I was diagnosed with adult ADHD. It turns out that I've had it my entire life. And a big part of my success is my ability to pivot and, and, and view um, solutions in ways that, that a lot of people don't. But it's because I had to. I was neurodivergent. So... Uh, it gave me an opportunity to forgive myself because growing up as a black man, um, especially as a black boy, the assumption was that I was stupid, lazy, or crazy, um, you know, so, but I knew how to act right. Uh, so being able to uh, make that a part of like my coaching style and specifically now I work with a lot of executives who, and a lot of people still have that shame and guilt are dealing with uh, no diversity, whether it's autism or ADHD, uh, able to help them, um, especially if they're masking and trying to reveal their true self. So first and foremost, um, embracing 
being a neurodivergent executive leader. That's number one. Um, number two is embracing therapy. It was my therapist because those are the actions that make our community, the way we treat each other, right? And then uh, how it pays itself forward. So, you know, how does, how does love relate to happiness? It's about truly understanding grace. And I'll, I'll add one other piece. Um, I've been thinking about a lot about the scripture around the, um, the peaceable kingdom. Um, uh, my, 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 my younger brothers and sisters, they're like, oh, the king, you know, isn't king, that's sexist. Uh, so so the, the peaceable kingdom is what I'm calling it, right? The peaceable kingdom, because we family, right? There's this notion about the, um, the lamb, uh, was it? The, um, the wolf laying with the lamb. Hmm. And I always found that to be kind of, oh, kumbaya, everything be great when Jesus come back. All right, cool. But the actual divine factor for me is, the the um the wolf always has the power hmm. like let's not pretend that if the wolf is laying with the lamb that it's the same agreement <laughs> between the two right so it goes against our human nature to actually choose peace to actually choose love it's a, that and that's the decision part right so hmm. that lamb has to trust that the wolf won't devour him. And the, and, and the wolf has to work to say that I'm not gonna lean into that, that quote unquote nature. Uh, so I'm gonna choose to be different. So when they say happiness is a choice, it's, it's about choosing grace and choosing to be different. It's not like, oh, I'm just gonna be toxic happy and just pretend like the pain doesn't exist. No, but I am gonna do the work to show grace um, to others and um, and just hope that that permeates the community. Wow. Grace is so, so hard of a construct to, to learn, um, especially when, when, if you're in turmoil or if you're in a constant state of, of friction, hmm. not only with yourself, but with, with other people. So that learning Perfect that word. grace, man, that is so, that's so tough. And I, I love, love that parable of, of, wolf um and, and lamb um so that you know you can you can have um understanding but you may not necessarily have agreement mm. <laughs> under those terms so I, I like that that wolf and lamb mm. parable um sean um definitely i definitely respect your walk of life and the the things that that the, the man that that you are um, but were, th were there some things that you have had to forgive in order to for your happiness to crystallize? Absolutely. There's some things in myself that I had to forgive. There's some things in my parents that I had to forgive. And there's most uh, of all some things in humanity that I had to forgive. Um, one of the things is... Um, we know that we all want grace, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it's difficult to give grace. And a lot of that is about our insecurity. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes we even have to forgive ourselves for being insecure. You know, we'll fuss at ourselves about things that we're trying to work on. Dang, quit being so insecure, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so one of those things is kind of forgive also things that other people put on me. Like, um, Things that were perhaps positive, but I internalize them as negatives based upon what other people said. So, like I tell, just live long enough. Most of that stuff that people are, you know, less than one percent of the people in the in the world own the wealth. Now, we're not going to talk about all the trickery and all of that. But I mean, when I say even the prosperity, and for me, the prosperity is peace. You know, there are ninety nine percent of the people who are running in one particular direction. And, you know, true blue sheep, you know, they're just going with, with everything. Mm -hmm. It's that less than 1%, it's that standout that achieves this, the actual prosperity. And so if we can forgive ourselves for the things that we think are imperfections now, but be realistic, because not everybody's hating. And even a hater can tell you the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. So if a hater says to me, right, and here's part of my understanding of forgiving people, if a hater, if a, who I think is a hater, you know, says to me, Sean, you stink, okay? Now, they may be saying it from a bad place, but I'm still going to do this. 
to make certain that I don't smell bad, right? Now, you know, a friend can say the exact same thing. So part of that forgiveness keeps me in a constant uh, place of returning to peace. Uh, like, like, like Brother Victor said, you know, it's something you work on. All this is something that you work on. When I was um, less secure and more unforgiving, um, folks may have uh, developed a new level of respect for me because I didn't raise hell, but I certainly would throw some hot water on it to put it out, right? So I was very unforgiving in that particular way because I was still worried about folks trying to take advantage of me because I have also a very nice side, right? So once I realized that, man, that forgiveness and forgiving the humanity in people because we are all human, I have, I mean, that forgiveness has led to major love for myself. Uh, I'm good with how I am. I'm not perfect. You know, I got things that I need to work on, but I forgave myself. Uh, listening to my parents' stories, any uh, pent up sorrow that I have for them, things they did not do. Uh, I didn't have to forgive them. It actually moved. Once I heard their story, I moved past forgiveness to flat out empathy. Like, man, thank you for not putting us in trash cans. Because you had the worst, part. you got deal to hand that's just amazing. So part of forgiveness is knowing your own story, right? Being able to retell your own story to yourself. Knowing the people around you story whenever possible. Ask people questions and listen. It helps you forgive them. It helps you understand them, right? Right? And also knowing the story of Black people. Because oftentimes we can be very hard on one another. So we have to continue to retell our story to ourselves so that we're not making excuses, but we are making understanding that we are not just somehow genetically defective, defective quite honestly, just factually and statistically speaking, we're quite gifted. And historically speaking, we are quite extraordinary as a matter of fact, right? But we have to continue to tell our own story so that we can give, so you can forgive some of those things that we see on the outside exterior right now, some of those behaviors we see, so that we can get to that, you know, real love and confidence. So hopefully, all that mixed in that little gumbo I gave y'all brings you back to, you know, that's that's where that forgiveness. The forgiveness is a whole body for me. It's me, the people around me, and the world around me, whenever possible. Awesome, awesome. I want to drop the mic right there, but um, <laughs> you, you you know, you said so much in terms of, um, and I call it holding on to, um to forgiveness you know you have to hang on to it because the things in nature things in that we encounter will definitely make us um act out in ways that will take us back to our old self uh you talked about um you know uh, uh retelling the story so you so you can sort of recall the hurt um empathize you know so, so you can learn how to empathize with someone putting Putting yourself in someone else's shoes and as relearning, I mean, learning our history as black men and committing yourself. Um, and I just think that for, for 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 us as black men, we need to cling cling to those principles and hang on to them because you, you know it, it's easy to let go. It's easy to give up. It's easy to say, you know what? Um, only I'm going through this, even though we have a shared history. Um, and I love that. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King says. Uh, forgiveness uh, means a willingness to go um, any length to to restore a broken relationship and you know as, as you all can attest as, as as black men as black people we have a lot of broken relationships um, the most important broken relationship sometimes is with us you know we get our, in our own way we're in a, in a perpetual abusive relationship with, with ourselves so mm -hmm. that in itself is not um, a, a, a good thing, um, but I'll, I'll be quiet there. Um, Victor, Victor, I want to ask you if, if you had, you know, if you had your um, board of happiness, your board of directors for your happiness, who would, who would be on it? Wow, so let's see. Uh, my board of happiness. <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, definitely uh, uh, my family, <laughs> my 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 wife and uh, my two children would definitely be on it. Um, ooh, my mother, my mother would be on it. Um, I've got to incorporate my pastor. <laughs> I got to 
incorporate my pastor. Um, and, oh my goodness, that's a good question. Um, I love, I love a good self-help uh, instructor. I, I, I feel like I need them. You know, I'm, I'm constantly listening to a lot of self-help uh, uh, YouTube videos, to be honest. You know, I'm listening to a lot of, I listen to some of the ones that you all probably heard of, but not maybe so, some of the younger crowd hasn't. Uh, Jim Rowan or the uh, Les Brown, you know, these individuals, um, I love positive, I love to be around positivity and I love leadership and I love motivation. And so uh, mm, that happiness, I, I would have to have you know, my, my, my wife, my two daughters, um, um, my, my pastor, and uh, maybe incorporate a, a, a self-help uh, instructor, a solid self-help instructor as well. Awesome, awesome. I, I am going to ask, um, you know, Harris and Sean the same question. I'm, I'm real curious to, to hear um, your answers in terms of your, your board of directors when it comes to happiness. What, what, who guides you? Uh, I, I'll start with, with Harris. All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just say, you know, just copy and paste my mother, <laughs> <laughs> wife and kids. Uh, if this ever comes back up, y'all y'all were first. <laughs> y'all yeah. <laughs> go dig it in the graves. Um, you know, so let's see. All right. So outside of of, of, of my foundation, uh, I don't know if you just heard the kids. They, they, they don't care what daddy do. Uh, <laughs> so I would have to say my, my, my father who has passed, and um, I feel like I know him more now um, that now that I've become a father and become a man and can now reflect on who he was. Because um, my father and I, he passed when I was 23, 25. And, um, you know, at that point in time in my life, I was really, I was at that stage where it was like, this is who I want you to be is my dad. And uh, the older I get now, it's about, oh, this is the man you were. Um, and I see now traits in the, the decisions that I'm making and understanding him better. Um, so that kind of, uh, and again, now I'm going to get into, you know, kind of our African mythology, uh, knowing that our ancestors are there, mm -hmm. um, knowing that a lot of their experiences on this plane uh, isn't who they, their spirit, who they were spiritually. You know how they say never talk evil of the dead. Um, there's something about their greater self that um, rests within my spirit that I know is a part of my pantheon um, for me to not just to be happy, but to live into everything uh, that I can be for myself and uh, for my family. Um, also, <clears throat> so I got deep real quick, you know, all of Wakanda, they got my back. And then uh, I would say my therapist. <laughs> Um, my therapist, I've had a therapist now for seven years, and there's something wonderful about having a therapist that can see your patterns. Hmm. There's something about your therapist like, yeah, it's about, it's about year three. Um, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but this is what's coming around the bend. Uh, being able to have someone who could, who can call you out in love and accountability. Uh, is 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 a wonderful thing, um, and let's see. Would there be any the last one uh, in particular? I'm gonna say uh, my my mother, and I want to put a little emphasis on my mother for a moment. Uh, I grew up in Baltimore, um, Baltimore City, and I didn't really realize how violent my upbringing was until like I really started working in white spaces. Um, I don't know, I'm sure you're sure your brothers have had the experience. You tell stories about your past amongst your peoples and it's all laughs and jokes and then you say it in mixed company and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if you have experience. I'm the only one <laughs> They clench oh, their oh, pearls, oh, you know? Oh, and, and then you're like, maybe I should tell this story in public, you know? <laughs> um, but there was one situation in particular where um, I could have lost my life. And um, I remember, uh, yeah, 
Caribbean mother, she don't care if your eye falling out. You do the wrong yeah. thing, you catching it, right? Um, but there's something about the prayer of a mother <laughs> that just feels just feels uniquely divine. Um, and I would say that uh, I've seen those prayers play a role in my in, in, in the happiness of my family, myself, my community, our church. There's just something about the prayer of a mother that um, gets a special seat in that pantheon. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, before Sean goes, I definitely like the fact that you said um, therapy. I, I definitely need to make an appointment myself, but um, I think it, it's important that, that we we tell when we talk about our, our lives and and just really talk to a, a third a third party, you know, that doesn't necessarily have any any stake or ties into um, in a non judgmental way that you're able to to just speak um, speak about what what is ailing you, think about um, things that that are perplexing you. Um, for no one's immune to to going to therapy, and I think it's, it's beautiful that. You know, we all should go. We all should, you know, I have gone in the past and I definitely um, view it as a positive thing. So I thank you for being vulnerable to yeah. God knows we all need it. So thank you. Hey, priceless. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sean, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you who is on, on your board of directors. Okay. All right. Um, I've had a chance to listen to a few great answers. <laughs> <laughs> I got an advantage a little bit. You're going to say that was a, um, First, it would be, well, I can love everybody in my circle, but not everybody can be on my board of happiness, mm -hmm. okay? It's not that I don't love them, but I'm a person who believes in passion, um, compassion, but also competence. So there's a certain sort of a thing you have to have and nothing against you if you don't have it, but you can't make it on my board of happiness. That's an important board, board right? Because that's a governing board, not an advisory board. All right. So first, it would be people who appreciate me for me, just as I am, right? Appreciate, but don't necessarily tolerate anything that might be clearly negative or destructive. So folks who do that, people who nurture me back, I'm a nurturer. I'm a serial nurturer and I can't help it. But I end up empty a lot because not a whole lot of people understand the concept of nurturing me back. And me being nurtured back is so connected to my happiness that is a must have. And I figured that out. Uh, and also people who understand the responsibility of their gate. My peace and my happiness is a fence around each and every one of us. Everybody we put on that board is a gate. So all by my little old self, I'm completely boxed in with good and happiness. Mm -hmm. So when I bring people in, I have to give them a gate responsibility. That means that you have to understand that you are the keeper of that gate. And if you're not competent enough to understand the importance of what peace means to me. So don't bring me no unnecessary mess. If somebody's swinging at my head, definitely holler duck and I'll know to swing back, right? But anything outside of that, it's okay to come to there and bring it to me. But once you see how I'm getting down and see how I correct myself when I say something overtly negative, when, I let, when you see that, then you understand the responsibility of your gate because I've made it clear in the way that I live my life and my standard. So that's what it is. It is folks who, who appreciate me for me the way I am, but don't, you know, but love me enough to also say, hey, hey yeah. You know, you should maybe think about that, right? And also understand if I say I'm, I'm okay where I am right now, because number one, I'm, a, I'm just going to be real with you. I am so extreme. I take all extreme advice from God. So it's never an offense, right? You may be brilliant, but you're not smarter than God, okay? So it's God is the Holy Spirit first. So that's part of understanding and loving me for me, knowing the extreme relationship I have with faith and the Holy Spirit. Um, and like I said, uh, um, you know, that nurturing is just, oh my goodness. That nurturing is so important because as givers, we can be emptied out. And it's, you know, man, it's hard to say we need nurture, right? But I, because I'm a nurturer, I require nurture. That's literally recharges my life blood. If you want me to be on this earth longer, I can't keep pouring out and not get poured back in. But, you know, like I said, with all that said, 
A gate, those are gatekeepers. And here's the reality. If I find that you cannot keep that gate of happiness, I have to love you, but take your gate responsibilities and I'm gonna fence off that side with no gate until I can find somebody who can accept the responsibility of that gate. I love it. Wow. Gotcha. Wow. Gotcha. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you once again um, dropped the mic. Um, I love the gate analogy. And one of my terms of my board is time. This, you know, I, I, of course, for me, my time equates to peace. So I, I definitely connect with you, Sean, but anybody who is wasting my time or mm -hmm. that, that, that's why I sort of struggle with in meetings. Um, I've said this before, I just struggle with meetings because people start talking about cats, start talking about their, their dogs, what they did last week. And I'm thinking, wow, I, I want to, I, I protect my, my peace by my time so if you're you know doing things that are that are pressing against my time and if i feel like i'm wasting it like mm. you I'll, I'll you know i'll close off that that section <laughs> i'll keep moving because uh i love you but yeah you, you def definitely and you're not um being aware of of others of others uh sensitivity to their to their space and time so um last question for 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 each of you um but I definitely would like to post that, you know, understand your gate to <laughs> within your happiness. Mm -hmm. But what, um, and I'll start with, with Victor, what has been the happiest phase of your life? If you, when you look back, is there a phase in life that you, that you say, you know what, I was happiness, hap uh, happiest when or at? Wow. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I was happiest. Ooh, it's tough. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All of my loved ones are just leaning in. Now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. oh, wow. You know, it's, 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 oh, gosh, I got some, you know, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I first got, you know, when I got married. <laughs> <That's> the... <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say, I wasn't thinking about, I wasn't thinking about. Yeah, that, you yeah. know. I was thinking about just personal happy. Yeah, just uh, per personal happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, personal happy. Um, you know, when I, <laughs> and I know this is, you've heard this a lot. When I really built my relationship with Jesus Christ, I have to take, for me, for me, it changed my life. It, it gave me the most confidence that I ever had. Uh, it gave me the most confidence um, it made me be able to love others uh, in a tremendous way, uh, to have certain forgiveness, uh, the forgiveness because forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. You know, it, all those things, you know, once I built my relationship with Jesus Christ, that really changed my life. It made me have more patience with people. Um, uh, patience and understanding, more self-love, which, which which assisted me in loving others uh, in a big time way and helping others in a big time way. Uh, because I do believe when you are able to love yourself, you're able to love others and treat others better. I mean, it, it just resonates. You, you can't help but to uh, be able to affect others in a positive way when you feel positive and good about yourself, it radiates. So um, that was the that was the the best time of my life of, of, of growing my relationship with Jesus Christ. It changed my life dramatically. And and I'll tell others, love yourself, love yourself, because when you love yourself, you're gonna do more for yourself. You're gonna hang around the right people. You're gonna study harder. You're gonna work harder. You, you're going to uh, do those things that will uh, change your life uh, in the best way. And it's going to affect others around you. So, um, yeah, my relationship with Jesus Christ. Once it grew, everything changed. Awesome. More confidence, everything changed. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Mm -hmm. Harris, I'll pose that same question to you. And, I, and I'm, of course, we are, I think we're all connected in terms of of God, um, definitely, you know, definitely instilling in us the, the virtues of 
patience, the virtues of, of love, of, you know, thinking outside of ourselves, which is great. And, you know, wives, of course, um, children, but your, your personal happiness, sure. what phase were you in? Sure. Um, so the, the short of the answer is actually right now, but I'll, I'll tell you what I thought it was up until recently. Um, a prophet spoke into my life. It was actually one of my friend's mothers. I, I met her in high school. And first time I met her, it was almost like she went into a trance. And she said to me, she doesn't even remember ever saying these words to me. She looked at me and she said, God wants me to tell you that you cannot skip steps. Mm. Like, lady, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All I did was say that my name was Harris. Like, where, where is this coming from? And um, throughout, so at around 28, is when I started as uh, somebody for all of our friends in, in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I was the director of uh, Wesley Community Center. And again, PK, you know, went to college, did accelerated degree program. I, you know, I quote unquote did everything right, you know, and it felt like that position was, um, you know, the, the, the fruit of my labors. Um, but it was a fast track. It definitely was a fast track to quote unquote, what I, you know, success. Um, and it, it was a great experience. You couldn't tell me anything, you know, um, opportunities were, you know, manna from heaven <laughs> type of scenarios. Uh, and, um, but as, as, as life progressed and, you know, become a father and, and um, just, you know, started learning more about even politics and, and uh, what it means to be not just a, a, a man, but a leader in a community who has a heart for the people and, and to be a servant and realizing that there's some people who will hate you because you love others. Mm -hmm. um, I started to uh, realize that all of that fast tracking meant that there was some internal development steps that I had missed. You know, when, um, when, when, when the community wasn't happy with me, I thought it was all gonna, I thought it was all going to crumble, you know. Um, but when you have those ups and downs along the way, you realize that tomorrow uh, is another day and the sun will shine. And that the overall arc of your story is going to be what speaks for you, not any one moment, right? So um, I am I am, I'm speaking cautiously, even as I say right now, this is my happiest moment because I know I still have a whole lot to learn. Um, but what's different this time around is the steps that involved self-awareness, the steps that involved um, learning uh, forgiveness uh, in the face of, um, you know, no apologies, um, uh, the understanding restorative justice, mm -hmm. understanding that sometimes you apologize for something, even if you feel that you haven't done anything wrong, uh, for the nature of either the relationship or just because God has told you to do it, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes the way things play out, somebody will come back to you and say, you know what, that, that was completely different from what I felt it was at that time. Uh, and, the, and the change had nothing to do with me. So this is a season of acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a season of li very little ego. This is a season of gratitude. Just saying thank you, God, and, and really meaning it, not like, you know, thank you for giving me what I deserve. No, thank you because I didn't have to be here. Right. Thank you for being in this spiritual place of joy, um, mm -hmm. even in the midst of turmoil. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a blessing in and of itself. So right now, uh, in contrast, I would say is, is, is the happiest time of my life. Wow. Wow. Very good. Eloquently said, uh, Harris. Um, I, I know we're running out of time, but I definitely want to um, allow Sean to close us out in terms of um, posing the, the same question. Okay. Right now, <clears throat> and I have to say that not, nothing uh, against some of the things in the past, but right now, and uh, those right nows happen, they go in and out, right? It's kind of ebbs and flows, you know? Uh, you know, a couple seconds from now, I may have a bad experience, but I don't stay there. 
So mm -hmm. it's usually for me the right now. If you ask me that 10 minutes from now, give me a second. It's going to be back from the right now because I am at peace. Not complacent, but I'm at peace. I am probably in the worst position that I have in many areas of my life that I've ever been in. Ever been in. Ever. And I mean that. But I'm at peace with it. Mm -hmm. Not complacent. So I'm doing the things I can to change the things, but I'm at peace, right? And I experience concern, but seldom fear. Mm -hmm. I don't even fear like death of natural causes at this point. I just don't want to die by a fool, F-O-O-L, fire, flood, high fall, uh, and snake bite, <laughs> right? Outside of that, you know, I mean, you know, whatever it is, I'll roll with it. So... You know, just that, and it was a journey. So I'm not bragging about how good it was a journey, man. If you, if folks only knew, man, if they only knew, but if I could give some of this to you, I would give it to you. And a lot of that really came from me because I don't get real complex. Like, um, my thing literally is my relationship with God, you know, and, 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 and I say that to people not to, not to beat them with it, not to cut them with it like a sword, but you got to realize God is not only a sword in defense, but God is also a shield. So I keep saying that so folks will know if you just can't find something, get you a concept greater than you. Because if you can only depend on you and the flesh, come on, you know you're behind closed doors and you know everybody around you. So you got to find something greater than you because if, if I'm the best I can do, wow, I'm in trouble. So all of everything people see that's good in me, I tell them you got to give that to God because I go by one general thing. We'll go Mark 12, 30 real quick. Um, when the teacher asked, um, Jesus, right? What is the greatest commandment? You know, what is the greatest law? And uh, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind and with all your strength. The second, this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these so the teacher asked which one, but Jesus gave it back in twins, conjoined twins, formerly known as Siamese twins. So you can't separate the one and have the other. Mm. So first off, what we're missing at, we stay stuck on love thy neighbor. What I had to work with is love as thyself. Because if I don't love me, I can't love my neighbor. It's impossible, right? And if I can't love my neighbor, I can't love God. So that for me is, uh, that's that whole thing in a nutshell. And it, that's why it's always the right now, not constantly. So I'm not constantly happy, but man, I get a redo every time my chest rises and falls. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, good. Very good. Victor, Harris, and Sean, it has been a wonderful, beautiful time listening to you to all three of you um i hope that people that are listening have learned something um and it's not just for black men but um that i know our connectivity speaks to mm -hmm. us as black men um but i know there, there's a lot of nuggets that all three of you guys have said that um people have resonated so um until next time you guys are beautiful uh, wonderful insightful black man and i am truly humbled i'm always humbled by listening to to others um speak their truth so i uh, thank you all and um until next time until next time same to you brother take love care. you brothers Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. take care of yourself most definitely thank you all thank you dr charlton thank you dr charlton <laughs>